The base ruling when it comes to medicine, uh, supplements, uh, enhancers, and things like that, is that everything is permissible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything for you to use on earth. Therefore, the base ruling on all of these things are permissible. But the ulama have given it three conditions. Maybe we can add a fourth one. Or maybe before we add the fourth one, we can just add the three conditions and explain that there is a difference between beautification and rectification. In terms of beautification, the ulama have added more conditions, such as, is there actually a need? Are you wasting money? Is it permanently going to change the creation of Allah, etc.? Here, we're talking about a separate category. So a person might use, I don't know, a supplement or an enhancer or they might use some kind of, I don't know, some kind of product. That product could be used for beautification or it could be used for rectification. This is very important for us to understand the two separate categories. A lot of people confuse the two. So they will use for beautification what could be used for rectification and say, it's halal, it's fine such as extensions and nails and those kind of things. If that is for the purpose of rectification, then it's permissible. If it's for the purpose of uh, beautification, the Messenger of Allah said, Allah, the person who has hair extensions for the purpose of beautification, not rectification, then the curse of Allah upon that person, may Allah protect us. So it's important for us to make that distinction. If it's for the purpose of rectification, so now we're talking about medicine, uh, supplements, enhancers, uh, things like proteins and vitamins and all those kind of things. If it's for the purpose of rectification, repairing your body, strengthening your body, etc., then these things are permissible, like we just said, under three conditions. Number one, it can't involve anything haram. It can't have any haram ingredients. It can't involve anything haram, such as, you know, exposing your aura or something like that. So you might go through an operation um, for the purpose of rectification. If it involves something haram, then it is not allowed. But what a person will say, well, what if there is a need? Second condition, if there is a need, then it becomes permissible for the purpose of rectification. If there is a need. If there is no need, then this needs to be investigated further. Because if there is no need, it could be seen as the person wasting money, etc., uh, third or fourth, yeah, third condition, it can't involve anything which is harmful. So a person might take something, I don't know, like steroids, for example, to build up their muscles, but in the long run, it's going to cause problems with the heart, etc. That's harmful to the human body. It's not permissible to use those supplements. Fourth condition, it can't involve a greater harm. It can't involve a greater harm. So a person... I mean, steroids would probably be a better example of that, but a person might use something and think, okay, well, everything is okay, but again, like I said, in the long run, it's harmful. So there can't be something which is a direct harm or uh, a greater harm or long-lasting harm involved. If these conditions are met, that there is a need, there's nothing harm involved, there's no harm, there's no greater harm, then the person can use those supplements, vitamins and, I don't know, all these other things that people use. But who is the one that's going to determine? That person must then go to the people of knowledge in that field. So now we're talking about the doctors and the scientists. So if they say, for example, here in the question, smelling salt for athletes uh, is harmful to the human body, there's plenty of research that's been gone into it, etc., then there's your ruling based on these conditions here. So we've applied the religious side, we're waiting for the medicinal side or the scientific side to confirm or negate. And once they have done that, then we can apply our conditions here and now you've got your answer. Um, but I would then at least still say, listen, uh, speak to a doctor or a pharmacist or something like that. They'll be able to tell you whether it's good for you or not then get it confirmed with, you know, a student of knowledge or someone, and then you, inshallah, have a, a better and more refined answer. But I've just given you here some very important principles on understanding the use of uh, medicine and, uh, and enhancers and supplements and
things which are similar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the best of hearts, more so than the best of bodies, but as well as the best of bodies in the dunya and in the akhirah.